Good morning students. Welcome to online session of social sciences. In previous class, we have acquired the knowledge regarding the Khalji Sultans. Jalaluddin Khalji captured the throne after murdering Kakubad. In 1296 CE, Alauddin ascended the throne after murdering Jalaluddin. Alauddin believed that all three policies could go together. That policies were consolidation expansion and defense he called himself second alexander his conquest may be studied under two headings first conquest in northern india second conquest of deccan in every conquest malik malik kafur played a vital role alauddin khilji reformed his administration a lot in order to check external invasion and internal revolt today we will understand about various economic reforms of alauddin khilji and after that we will study about other dynasties economic reforms alauddin khilji was the first delhi sultan who took interest in the fiscal form reforms fiscal means relating to the income received by a government especially from tax so he was interested in fiscal and economic reforms Dear students as you know that Alauddin Khilji had a very large army he used that army to fight against the mongols so he need needed a lot money to maintain his army he also used this money to suppress suppress means to prevent internal revolts of his dynasty because of these two reasons he introduced various economic and financial reforms reforms means changes increase in income now we will study about the economic and financial reforms among many reforms first one is regulation of prices regulation means a rule made by any authority alauddin issued regulation to control the prices of all commodities of common use for example that raw materials raw materials or agriculture products that can be bought and sold barley wheat rice sugar cloth are few examples of commodities used by the people he introduced same weight and measures throughout the country so that traders could not cheat the people there was punishment for the traders who used to who used false weights and measurements second is control over supplies all the local producers within 100 miles of delhi means producers of living and that in that particular area they were asked to keep 10 mounds mounds means that is a varying unit of weight in some ancient countries especially in india unit of weight equivalent about 37 kg means one mount is equal to 37 kg so that people they were asked to keep 10 mounts means 370 kg so that much uh, grains they can keep with them and they have to sell the surplus surplus means more than the requirement or more than what is needed so whichever surplus grains was there that they have to sell to the government now let's understand this uh, practice with the help of an example suppose one local producer is there that is producing 15 mounts of grains now he could keep only 10 mounts of grains now rest of the 5 mounts they have to sold to the government now this was done so that the people could store the grain for any uh, that uh, people could not store the grain for any kind of future profit now governments were building large granaries granaries means a large building where they were keeping grains to store and that large granaries they were storing these grains and these grains were provided to the people at very low uh, rates in the time of scarcity scarcity means 
when there is a gap between sources and its wants. The rate was fixed by the government. Nobody was dared, dared means to have enough courage. So nobody was dared to sell the goods at higher rate than the fixed rate. Third is control over markets. Alauddin appointed high officials called Shahaniya A. Mandi. It means superintendents of market. Now they were performing two kinds of work. First, to supervise the market means to watch the market to make sure that the work is being done properly. Second is, to enforce market regulations means to make people obey rules of market. Next is rationing system in times of scarcity. Rationing refers to an artificial control on the distribution of scarce resources like food items etc. Alauddin introduced the system of rationing wherever drought, drought means a long period without rain or famines means a lack of food over a period of time in a large area. Now both occurred in an area of his relim. Relim means country or state where the rule of king is was done. So wherever this uh, cases of that condition of drought and famine was there, Alauddin always used this system of rationing. Fifth is revenue reforms. Revenue means money regularly received by a government company etc. Alauddin made useful reforms or changes in the land revenue system. Land revenue means revenue from land. In this system, land under cultivation was measured and on the basis of land, uh, fertility of land revenue was fixed. This land revenue was accepted in both manner, in cash as well as in as kind. In cash means in simple cash money. In kind means instead of paying in cash that was paid or given in goods, commodities or services. Alauddin took many measures to end corruption in the, in the collection of land revenue. Corruption means dishonesty or dishonest activities. So he also introduced grazing tax means Hindi that is called chari. This tech was imposed on the people who reared cattle for earning some extra money. End of Khalji dynasty In 1316 CE, Alauddin Khalji died. Alauddin was a very powerful but None of his successor was powerful enough to control his empire. After four years, in 1320 CE, a group of nobles which was led by Ghazi Malik, he was the governor of the Punjab. He invaded Delhi and captured the throne. After this success, Ghazi Malik assumed the title of Gyasuddin Tughlaq and he founded a new lines of ruler in Delhi known as Tughlaq dynasty. Now we learn about Temu's invasion of India. In, 19, in 1398, Temur attacked India. This was the period when the Delhi Sultanate was about to collapse, means about to break into pieces. Temur crossed the, Temur crossed the plains of Punjab without meeting any opposition. It means that nobody tried to stop Temur. The people ran away. They left their homes to be looted by the Temur army. When the uh, marauders, means raiders, reached there, the Temur's army reached there the gate of, at the gate of Delhi. The Delhi Sultan Mahmud and his minister Malik Khan offered feeble means without any energy or power. They have offered feeble resistance. Resistance means to uh, trying to stop something. In the battle fought on 17 December 9, 1398, 
Taimur won a decisive victory. Decisive means final victory. Taimur stayed at Delhi for 15 days and he had a large quantity of loot. Then he returned via Merud, Haridwar, Kangra and Jammu. With sacking, sacking means an attack on a building or a town in which a lot of destruction is caused. And plundering, plundering means stealing from people or places during wars. So when he was returning, he had a very great that sacking and plundering there. Next is Sayyid dynasty. Temur, before leaving India, had appointed Khizr Khan as the governor of Punjab. In 1414, Khizr Khan marched to Delhi and occupied the throne of the Delhi, Delhi Sultanate. Khizr Khan laid the foundation of new dynasty known as Sayyid Sultans of Delhi. The Sayyid dynasty had only four rulers. First was Khizr Khan. He ruled from 1414 to 1421 CE. Second was Mubarak Shah, he ruled from 1421 to 1434 CE. Third was Mahmud Shah, he ruled from 1434 to 1443 CE. And the last was Alam Shah, <coughs> he was the fourth and the last ruler and he ruled from 1443 to 1451 CE. Now during the whole reign or rule of the Sayyids, Punjab was in turmoil. Turmoil means a state of great disturbance or confusion. Because there was many revolts and uh, that many revolts occurred in various places. After this, there is introduction of new dynasty that is the Lodi dynasty. Now dear students, do you know who was the last ruler of Sayyid dynasty? Yes. Alam Shah. Alam Shah was thrown over by the first ruler of Lodi dynasty, Bahlol Lodi. Bahlol Lodi ruled from 1451 to 1488 CE. He was the government of governor of Lahore. And he was governor of Sirhit also. After overthrowing Alam Shah, Balo Lodi occupied Delhi and laid foundation of new dynasty of Lodi kings. The first, after this we are having Sikandar Lodi. Sikandar Lodi was the most capable ruler of the Lodi dynasty. He ruled from 1488 to 1517 CE. It means 29 years. He tried to consolidate Consolidate, consolidate means to make position powerful. So he tried to cons consolidate his powers. For this, he brought provincial governors. Provincial go governor means areas under his rule. So he brought the governors and chefians. It means the leader of a tribe. He brought both under his control. He suppressed Suppressed means stopped forcefully. He suppressed the prevailing disorders and, like Balban, attempted to restore the dignity of the court. Sikandar Lodi paid attention towards the condition of road and the security of travellers and traders. As a result, the road became safe for travel and trade again flourished there. The author of Tariq e Daudi speaks highly of him. In 1517, Sikandar fell ill and died. After him, that Ibrahim Lodi ascended the throne. Sikandar Lodi was succeeded by Ibrahim Lodi. He was a very arrogant ruler. He treated Afghan nobles very harshly. Because of his behavior, Abraham Lodi earned enmity. 
the governor of punjab dolat khan lodi turned against ibrahim lodi and declared himself practically independent dolat khan invited zahiruddin mohammad whom we known as babar the king of the afghan he invited babar to invade india and overthrow ibrahim lodi babar led as many as five expeditions to india during 1519 to 26 ce bab